what jobs are available to expats going to the Philippines? I'm not being lazy, by the way, by being over here, so we can actually see the whiteboard behind me. Um, the first one's the English teacher. Be aware that international schools and some of the other schools like to have native speakers. Um, the Philippines generally, though, has good English ability, but you may find that you can find stuff with NGOs, non-government organizations, and charities, etc. Um, but the, for regular work, you're probably going to be looking at China. Um, but also, you can find stuff for teaching Koreans that's seasonal. You can find stuff that's um, more to do with finding one-to-one -one work and stuff. You have to advertise yourself a bit more. But you can start doing that now and then start looking for it when you get there. If you're living in the bigger cities, you're going to have a lot more Koreans and people from other countries, Japan, etc., where that that's more relevant. Um, because, like I said, in the Philippine schools themselves, the public schools, there's not a lot of money at the best of times. Uh, a lot of the teachers have... Uh, payday loans because money is often late because of being government payments um, so the opportunities on that are pretty slim but one to one etc online whatever there's a lot of opportunity for that call centre lead generation that's actually to do with I've got a noisy neighbour outside I, that's actually to do with business to business basically what you're doing is working on behalf of the call center to bring them work in. So you're looking for the clients in your country over the phone and contacting them direct. There's actually full-time jobs doing that. Uh, a friend of mine was doing that in Cebu for about 16,000 pesos a month. Not big money, but if you're just looking for some money to tide you over, but be aware that you're on the shifts relating to whichever country it is. It's normally the U.S., so you're normally working from about 10 o'clock at night till the early hours of the morning. Uh, but there is full-time jobs doing that. Call centre language trainer, obviously accents and things like that. International companies are often interested in that sort of thing. So it's worth approaching some of them even before you go to the Philippines. Um, tech related if you've got specific skills there's often opportunity um, what I found with doing the dialing systems is a lot of the IT guys around Cebu weren't very good at it and the ones that are are normally already taken by some of the bigger call centers and when you try to get them to do something they're always trying to cash in and everything uh, what I mean is when I was looking at designing the avatar system and paying somebody to do it they're like oh no no you 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 buy off me and I'm like have you built one no no but I'll come back to you with it in six months time whatever it was quite funny because the one guy come back to me I think it must have been about four months later and he's like oh will you lease it off me and I'm like no I've already built two by now because um, obviously he was doing it at the company he was at in his spare time um, so, so in theory if it was the company I left in the UK they would actually try to take ownership of that because uh, obviously when you're working with a company they try to take ownership of the stuff that you've developed within the business and obviously in his case he developed it while he was at the business um, the white face on the brochure that's quite a common one in China you hear people doing it when they roll the business out they want forward um, what we call front of house people to promote things they're quite keen on it and you've just got to find somebody that actually recognizes it or needs it like call centers do it a lot um, but it could be other things it could be you're selling farm machinery globally or whatever um, they want to present themselves with a more western appeal as such they roll out the white face sounds very racist I know but it's actually true they do do this stuff um, call center operator you can actually work at a call center although you have to be aware that for a lot of this stuff you need to get a permit you need to have a, a working permit for the Philippines myself being 13A is not really a problem but it may be for you um, so a lot of the call centers may not actually want to do the paperwork for you 
but they should do. I know a friend of mine was working in a call centre for months before they even bothered to do the paperwork. Uh, I think they were seeing if he was staying there or not before they even bothered talking to immigration. Still paid him either way. Um, sales office. If you've got an international company, uh, they may actually still want a sales force of some description. Still gets back to the white face. But they often like a presence regionally. So you may find an opportunity where you're promoting a Western business in Asia where they want somebody to appear that you're from their head office or whatever and now their um, local salesperson. There is opportunities to do it. Um, finding these things, we'll talk about it after I've gone through the list. Tech support. Tech support, same thing. A lot of companies are doing this through outsourcing. So they like having people available um, that understand their issues. I know myself, I get frustrated dealing with people in India, not because of their accents, but the problem that they often don't know what they're doing. If you're speaking from somebody that is from the same background, etc., you can actually get a rapport going to solve the, the problems. So in a call center or in a, like say, you're dealing with your internet router, which is one of the most common issues people face on the planet, um, getting you as a supervisor where they, the person in the Philippines hands it over to you to deal with them because uh, they're getting frustrated, irate, etc., may be a step forward and there's opportunities to do that also from selling software and other bits and pieces there's a market for it because when people get a computer virus they call you up and go oh it's doing this doing that you can do a lot of the report uh, repairs remotely um, even if it's free software um, but it, it's another story sports trainers I know people that do what what Americans call soccer, we call it football in the UK. Uh, they do basketball, they do boxing coaching. Um, I believe some people even do martial arts, but normally they're there because they're interested in the martial arts, not actually teaching it. But the reality is, there is actually people that go there um, through Spalding or whoever to go and train in these countries. They're training the locals in their sports because obviously they're, they're qualified teachers they see the problem is different phrases we call them uh, PTIs physical training instructor uh, but you may have some another terminology for it but they're basically fitness and sports coaches teachers etc who will go and teach and as such you'll find universities and colleges are interested in this you'll find that even some businesses may actually be interested for something community orientated but other community orientation stuff normally doesn't pay very well if at all but the stuff relating to the big universities um, yes it does because there's heavily into sports um, pay on it you have to negotiate none of these pay a lot of money um, actor I was talking to my wife about this earlier because there's a few actors that have gone into the Philippines you will need to speak Tagalog though and I know people are going to go, oh, Matt didn't say, to say it right. Um, I say it as I, I read it. Um, but the, the point being is you will need to be fluent because they're not going to exp um, have that much in English. <laughs> you may have a, a bit a bit here and there, um, but to actually get something long-term rather than just once every six months, you're going to have to be able to actually converse in the local language to get into the TV shows, um, but it is possible. Uh, chiropractor, yes, I've misspelled that because <laughs> I was rushing this list earlier. Um, but uh, but the the point with that is there is somebody I know that is quite successful. With that he sells his uh, treatments in like uh, I think ten sells ten treatments at a time. So I think there's about 1,000 pesos of treatment, so you have to pay 10,000 pesos. Um, he's very successful and does quite well out of it. Doctor, similar thing. There's a lot of work for doctors in the Philippines. It's also good for getting some experience, but also there's involvement with NGOs, non-government organizations, charities, and other bits and pieces you could get involved in for doing stuff for free. Um, there is always opportunities. 
dentists work. Dentists are a bit like barbers in the Philippines. So the opportunity to become a dentist, I haven't looked into how to do it, but I do know that people, some people that have done it, that can make quite a fair living in the Philippines. Um, that's what I can say about that. Now, from David Salon, which is not on this list, David David Salon is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, um, hairdressing salon in the Philippines. He's a British expat, and he basically, from I think they're on a franchise basis. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent, but let's put it this way: he's on, he's got TV ads, he's got billboards. His daughter's now got her own. Um, hair and beauty stuff they are the epitome of doing it right because they, they, they've really done well in the Philippines um, but all these things are available now you will find things like going on to LinkedIn um, was it glass floor or something like that some of these recruitment sites will get you in the door a little bit um, but I find LinkedIn is probably the key one where you've got a bit more face-to-face -face discussion. Uh, the reason being is a lot of these, if it's a Filipino you're dealing with, a lot of the time they can feel a bit um, inferior. There's this inferiority complex in the Philippines, which is a major problem. Uh, as such, you need to be aware of it because you need to try and get around that because if they feel inferior to you but yet should actually be your boss, uh, you've got a problem because they're not going to hire you. So you've got to do it in the right manner that actually sells things without feelings, making them feel uh, second to you. Now, if you search through the internet, you'll find the, a lot of these jobs are around you'll see IT support blah 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 um, there's nothing to stop you applying but it's often very difficult to get through that's why I say trying to get to the decision maker and manipulating things in a positive way is extremely important um, I will also say that going to things like the green bowls and the yacht club etc are very good to meet with expats that own businesses in the Philippines. I know several expats have done very, very well out of doing that. Um, one is making about 90,000 pesos a month, uh, which isn't a bad salary in the Philippines, uh, managing a sales office. So there is opportunities there. They're not going to be easy to find. They're not going to be straight walking. Um, you may have to do a career change, you may have to retrain in some form, you may have to change the way you think about business because the Philippines business is very, very different to what you're used to. If you get a good Western company, then you may be able to get your foot in door, the door there, but with those, it's normally um, very specific posts. For example, for HR or recruitment or something that they're looking for specifically to bring their way of operating from the West, which normally means some history with that business. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I know, for example, a, f a friend of mine <laughs> managed to get promoted to a director of a large corporation and then transferred straight out to the east because once she was a director the company that she was interested in suddenly went Ding, we want you and she's like I'm on my way uh, so you've got to spend a bit of time and work out how you're going to make that contact you could actually just go through and apply for lots of jobs but I would say you're going to get about 99% rejection rate um, purely because of the Western thing. Because they're going to assume you want more money, they're going to assume that you there's issues relating to you and them. There's a lot of stuff that people don't discuss face to face. Um, it's very, very strange. It is very, very strange. But I've seen the same in the Middle East. Because you get people that are used to seeing the, the foreigner, the, the Westerner, as a different level. They see us often on the same par as the guys in the Middle East, the, you know, the, the Saudis or whatever. 
But what happens is you then, like myself, when I'm in the Middle East, I've got a driver. Um, I'm fully founded, so all my maid service, cooking, everything's done for me. So it's very hard for somebody to compare themselves to you if they've come from that environment because they're used to you sitting above them uh, because they're going off to the canteen while you're going off to a restaurant. They're off to get a taxi while you've got a driver taking you to where you need to be. And that's, that's where these issues come from. I mean, I suppose it's probably least relevant with engineers uh, because engineers often operate on the same level um, or very similar because everyone has to get their hands dirty. So I just wanted to put those opportunities there just so you can see there is stuff there out in the Philippines but you really have to hunt around for it. Um, if you've managed to source one of these types of jobs or something else, please put it in the comments. What did you do? Um, because I'm sure other people will find it interesting as well because we're all about helping each other here. Because um, I'll be honest with you, I'm not here to make money. It, it takes. <laughs> I've got much better things to be doing with my time, um, financial-wise. But I do it because I like sharing information. Uh, so what have you done? What did you do? Myself, I just started the business there. That was the easiest option for me. Being down in England, Ilya, I didn't really want to drive into Cebu every day. Um, that sort of thing is if you're a provincial, the opportunities go like that. <laughs> uh, because obviously with the internet... Unless you're actually on a main road, it obviously declines as well. So the more provincial you are, the less opportunities you have. Thanks for watching.